Hey, do the new head boom rackets offer more power than the speed line? And is the new Auxetic 2.0 technology in the 2024 range worth the upgrade? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you as I've been playtesting all of the new head boom rackets, along with all of the new head speed rackets using Trackman technology, which allowed me to track my ball speed, ball spin and placement. So I'm not gonna go through every single spec of all five of the new boom rackets, as you can find the specs everywhere online. But what I will do in this video is share my thoughts and feelings of how my playtesting went, how the rackets really feel to play with, how they compare to the speed line, and what the data showed. But first, I will show you the new paint job, as if you're anything like me, the way a racket looks, is quite important. So this is the new head boom. It's kept its kind of turquoise and black colorway with a slightly different arrangement to this asymmetric patterning here. It's got a matte finish, not quite so matte as the new head speeds, but they've got this font that is used across the newer head rackets and they've included the specs with this embossed detail on the inside of the throat here as well. All five of the new head booms come in this standard colorway, but what head have done in this line of rackets is they've introduced an alternate colorway. This colorway is available in the Boom MP, the Boom MPL and the Boom Team L. And as you can see, is very funky. What they've done is they've kept this turquoise color through the main bulk of the racket, but they've added more of a baby blue color through the bottom and the top of the frame here. Now, it's not my personal cup of tea. Um, I actually tend to prefer this colorway. I do like more minimal looks, and this one is just a little bit leery for me, but I've been play testing this at the tennis club and so many players have asked me about it. So I think this colorway is gonna be really, really popular. I know that Coco Goff will be endorsing this colorway of the head boom. But yeah, let me know what you think of the two colorways in the comments below. Here they are. But yeah, I had to get out of the way before we talk about how the racket's played. I said I wouldn't go through all of the specs of all of the rackets, but I'll give you a brief overview about which racket from the boom line is for which type of player. So the Boom Pro, is the heaviest racket in the lineup. It's got a smaller head size than all of the others at 98 square inches. However, all of the frames have a 16 by 19 string pattern. So although this has a slightly smaller head, because it's got a 16 by 19 string pattern, it's still quite open and does offer power and spin potential. And what you'll also notice about these rackets, which is unique from all of the other rackets in the head lineup, is the shape of the head. You'll notice that it's got a slightly wider shape to the top of the head here, which opens up that string pattern. It makes the sweet spot bigger and offers more power. The Boom Pro is the racket that I would choose as I usually play with the Head Speed Pro. And this weighs in at a similar weight of 310 grams unstrung. Then you go down to the MP and the MPL, which both have a 100 square inch head size. Again, 16 by 19 string pattern. The difference between these two mainly is their weight. Out of the two of them, the MP is for more advanced players as it's slightly heavier, and the MPL would be for players who are maybe transitioning from junior tennis as it's a really good light weight, but also for players that aren't quite strong enough to wield around the heavier MP version. Then you've got the Team and the Team L, which have a bigger head size. The Team has 102 square inches and the Team L has 107. And these rackets are more for players newer to tennis or players who have quite slow swings as these bigger head sizes will offer very easy power. So onto the most important part of the video, the play testing. I actually play tested the boom rackets in two different ways. First, I went to head headquarters in Austria to test the rackets in a very closed and scientific practice. I used each of the five rackets in five different exercises. First, I hit forehands inside out, trying to hit with spin, height, and depth. Then I hit forehands down the line, looking for faster and more penetrating flat shots. Then backhands cross court, followed by flat serves down the tee on the juice side, and then kick serves down the tee on the juice side. Now doing a closed practice like this, may not be the most realistic way to test rackets. As we know, when we're playing in a match situation, we have a wide variety of balls coming at us in different situations. However, what this more closed practice allowed us to do was test the rackets like for like. All of the rackets were strung up with head links tour at 52 pounds, which allowed us to test all of the rackets against each other. But also because I did the exact same test the day before using all of the speed rackets, I can compare the booms to the speeds. 
And so if you hang around to the end of the video, you'll find out which racket I hit my biggest serves with. My second practice, I actually took the Boom Pro onto court in a practice set against one of my coaches. So I'll show you some of the footage from that as well. But what did I think of the rackets? Now, those that have followed the channel for a while will know that I play with the Head Speed Pro, and that's been my favorite racket for many years now. So it's gonna take a lot for me to change rackets. But I must admit, the Head Boom doesn't feel too far from the Head Speed line. I did feel that across the board in the Boom rackets that they did offer me a little bit more power on my shots. And I did think that they offered me a little bit more spin but I would say that I didn't get as much control with these rackets as I do with my speed rackets when I'm hitting my flatter shots. But by simply adjusting my swing slightly to impart a little bit more spin onto my shots, I could regain that control through hitting with spin. Now using the head speeds, I'm used to playing with a 100 square inch head. And so moving to the Boom Pro, which had a 98 square inch head, it was actually very easy to pick up and use straight away. I would say that when I hit the ball off center, it didn't feel quite as plush as the head speed, but it still felt pretty stable. I certainly felt that this was an improvement on the 2022 version of the Boom. A subtle improvement, um, but an improvement nonetheless. When I was testing between the MP and the Pro, I definitely felt that the MP gave me easier access to power. And with that slightly bigger head size of 100 square inches, it just felt a little bit easier to play with. But that did cost a little bit of control. So for me personally, because I'm used to playing with the speeds, which do offer me a little bit more control, I would probably go for the Boom Pro, which feels a little bit more like that. But if you're looking for something that gives you more power, I do think that the MP is a good option. And if you're not strong enough to wield around an MP, then an MPL, especially if you're an upcoming junior player, can be a really good racket choice. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this video, hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot. Let's get back to the video. So lovely racket. I think probably saw by serve pretty well, especially my first serve, which I was hitting flat, had a lot of pop on it. Um, and I felt like I could rip my forehands. If I was to compare this to the speed, uh, I think it definitely gave me a bit more juice on my serve and on my forehand in particular. Um, and a decent level of spin, considering this is a 98 square inch head. I would say that it didn't feel as clean, some of the shots, um, compared to my speed. Maybe that's just because I'm so used to playing with the speed for you know the last 10 years. But um, I think if I played with this for a bit longer, I, I could fall in love with it. Um, it's just a shame it's not in all black. But yeah, really good feedback in my first competitive set. Let's take a look at the data. Okay, so I don't want to say too much now, but uh, yes. I think we have some consistency to the uh, to the results from yesterday. And we, in addition, I think we have some surprises. Okay. So yeah, so I think the data will be really interesting to see and, uh, and pretty cool. Awesome. So when I was hitting my forehand inside out, as you can see here, the Boom Pro actually had the lowest speed compared to all of the other boom rackets in the line. But when you look at the Boom MP, it offered the most power, closely followed by the Boom MPL. And interestingly, when you go all the way down to the Team L, which had the biggest head size, I was able to get a surprising amount of power from such a light frame, but that's where that massive head comes in. So the Team L is definitely a good racket if you're a player that's a little bit weaker or has slightly slower or shorter swings where you want that easy power from the racket. But what was really surprising when you look at the spin rates across all of the Boom rackets, the Boom Pro, which had only a 98 square inch head, got a surprising amount of spin. Maybe that's why the ball speed was much, much slower on that one. But when you move on to the accuracy of those shots, you can see clearly that the Boom Pro, circled in the red here, I hit the most accurately. In fact, I think I only missed one ball ever so slightly wide, whereas the other rackets in the lineup, you could see a slightly bigger spread. When I was hitting my flatter forehands down the line, the fastest racket was the Boom Pro. That's where that heavier swing weight and bigger plow through allowed me to hit through those flatter shots more effectively. But as you can see, looking at all of the rackets in the lineup, I was hitting the forehands quite fast. The Boom Pro was my fastest shot speed at 152.3 kilometers per hour. A 
Again, when you look at the accuracy of the rackets, the red circle here is the smallest circle, uh, and that's because using the Head Boom Pro, it allowed me to get that little bit more precision when I was hitting my shots. The other rackets all had pretty good directional control, but you can see slightly more spread when it came to depth. And that's where having that extra power comes at a slight cost when it comes to control. Now moving on to my backhand, which is a shot that isn't very powerful. In fact, when I play, it's more of a control shot where I'm waiting for opportunities to run around and hit my forehand. And surprisingly, you can see that the racket that had the most power for me was the Boom Team. And that's because my racket speed is pretty slow on my backhand side. I was relying on that bigger head size to give me extra power. But what was really surprising was when we look at accuracy, my backhands were spraying a little bit with the Boom Pro. I mean, oh no, I remember. So the, the racket I used before the Pro was much lighter. And my first three backhands with the Pro, I hit really late and hit more down the center instead of hitting wide. And then I kind of got back into it and it was better after that. But the Boom MP with the blue circle was definitely the most accurate here. Now, in my opinion, the serve test is probably the most accurate test as there are no variables. When I'm receiving an oncoming ball being fed by a coach at the other end, no matter how accurate they try to be, the ball's going to be always slightly different each time. Whereas when I'm serving, I have full control over everything that's happening. So when you look at the serve speeds, you can see here that from the lightest racket through to the heaviest racket, there was an increase in power in each racket that I used. Clearly, the Head Boom Pro gave me the biggest serves and the most accurate serves. But how does that compare to the head speed? Hang around for one minute and I'll show you. Finally, moving on to second serves. And again, the speed's pretty similar and the spin's pretty similar. All of the rackets offered me a lot of spin on my serve. And I would say that compared to my head speed racket, I could definitely hit my kick serve better with this. So the two questions I wanted to cover for you at the start of the video. One, do boom rackets offer more power than speed rackets? And is the Auxetic 2.0 worth the upgrade? To answer the second question, I love the Auxetic technology. And as soon as they introduced it into my new speeds, I absolutely loved its new feel. And when it comes to the head boom, because it's a brand new racket from 2022, it's only ever had Auxetic technology. And so if you've got the 2022 boom, you've got a great racket in your hands. However, I will say that the Auxetic 2.0 has a very subtle difference. It's not a huge difference, but it's a great difference. And when I played with the new boom, I definitely felt it compared to the existing one, as I did with the speed line. So if you've already got the booms, I would say it's such a subtle difference, it's probably not worth it unless you really, really love the new alternate colorway. But if you're looking to get involved with booms and you have the option between buying a discounted 2022 version or the new more expensive 2024 version, I would definitely go for the new Auxetic 2.0 technology as it does make a difference. So I hope that helped. But now let's talk about which racket gave me the biggest serves. When I tested the Head Speed Pro, my average first serve speed was 182.16 kilometers per hour. And my fastest serve was 184.4 kilometers per hour. But when I used the Head Boom Pro, my average first serve speed shot up to 187 kilometers per hour. And my biggest serve was 189.1 kilometers per hour. And to be honest, I was gutted as I was going for 190 and I had to stop because if I did any more, the test would not be fair. So yes, the boom did give me more power than my speed. Am I gonna change from my speed to the boom? Probably not as I love the speed so much. And as you know me, I love a black and white racket. So there you go. I hope I answered all the questions you had coming into this video. But if I haven't, let me know what you wanna ask in the questions below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Yeah, and I mean, if, if a different player, let's say a club player was doing the, these tests, they, they would probably find more power in this way because their swings may be slower. Yeah. So this end would look, but the way that I play, I think the benefit of me using an MP or a Pro is the added control that I would get because Absolutely. I'm swinging fast. Absolutely, that's a very good comment. I, I really think that let's say players on a, on a lower level than you, they, they would produce lower speed values on, on MP Pro and PL uh, and would have the benefit of a, of a high speed on, on a Team L and Team uh, model. I think um, I'm really impressed with the whole, the whole lineup um, and I think what would be interesting 
is receiving different types of ball as well because I think if I was playing a competitive match with somebody that hits a heavy ball, yes. I think the, the pro would hold up yes. really well, of course. If I tried the team, although in those standard practices with a flat feed, yep. if I've got somebody ripping a heavy forehand in, yes. I'm not sure those would cope with it. But they're not for that. They're for a player that you know is playing at a slightly lower level, maybe um, slightly slower swings and exactly. yeah. But it's uh, the data is so um, interesting and insightful, um, and it really does match up again. Like like yesterday, it matches up with how I felt as well. Okay, this is good. Um, but no, thank you guys. It was incredible to have the, the pro player treatment, and um, yeah, I'm definitely going to think differently about those uh, those lighter frames because, as I say, they're not frames that I would consider for myself in the past. But I, I think I will look at them differently now. Yeah, uh, I just can say that you also have done really well. So so you produced some really nice data. Um, I think you hit very consistent. Uh, so that was also right, nice to see. So amazing. Great. Well, I'd love to come back sometime and, and do it again with some different, some different rackets, some new lines.